Hi guys, welcome back to Kanto Housewife. Finally, I have time to do a recap on my $50 a week for two people challenge. Spoiler alert, we can't even get our own hot dogs. For you that are wondering why I haven't been updating my YouTube is because Roland started crawling and Riley just all of a sudden <laughs> fell in love with reading books. So I spent like 46 hours reading to Riley and Roland and really encourage Roland to crawl. Now I really don't have time to film and edit long videos. I still do like daily update Monday through Friday or Saturday um, on my Instagram. So for you that would like daily recipes, make sure you follow my Instagram because I do update it daily. And some of you actually recommended me to start a full um, website with detailed recipes. So stay tuned, it's launching January 1st, 2024. Before I tell you if I succeeded or not, let me tell you that this is easier than I think it is. So the hardest part I would say is planning because $50 for two people for like a week, it's basically $1.19 per meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And it's hard to do it in the Bay Area because everything is getting more expensive. So to do that, I actually got a planner and I have been going to like different places like Costco, Sam's Club, Saveway, Ranch 99, etc. So the biggest thing I learned about saving is buy in bulk. You will get the cheapest deal if you buy in bulk. So for example, this brisket I got, it's 15 pounds, but they're selling it for $3.69 a pound compared to like $6 at like Saveway, which is like, you know, almost two thirds of the price. And if you do it like the long run, it's gonna save you a lot of money. And also like seasoning, get it in bulk. So for example, like this Lee Key uh, oyster sauce, which I use a lot in all my recipes, it's like seven bucks at Costco, $6.99. And if you get it like the smaller one from like Ranch 99, it's going to be like about $5. So it that out. So if you like this series, let me know. I can do more weeks or even try a whole month on it. Comment below to let me know. But I did use an expense tracker to write down everything and I learned so much from it because for example, I learned that chicken breast is the cheapest meat out of all. And then the next thing would be chicken thigh and then pork shoulder and then it will be brisket. So everything I'm gonna count will include the seasoning. I'm gonna do everything by tablespoon, by teaspoon. Uh, also the meat I'm gonna do by like pound and calculate everything based on the cup size, including coffee. And if you want to see the recipe, I will have separate videos on it, but let's get started. So all of the prices I have is as of September and October of 2023. And of course, every area would be different, but I'm based on the San Francisco Bay Area. It's probably cheaper at other states, but hey, a dollar and 19 cents per meal in San Francisco per person, it's a pretty good deal. If you're like my husband and you don't care what kind of meat to eat, the cheapest thing to eat out of my list as of September would be chicken breast. It's like $1.19 a pound if you get it frozen. I like to get my meat in bulk and I just freeze it into little pieces after I cut it. So I have um, pork shoulder, chicken thigh, fish, shrimp, uh, beef, and also bacon. So if you are a vegetable lover, the cheapest um, option that I found are tofu, broccoli and romaine hard. Romaine hard is the cheapest. It was 60 cents a pound and then broccoli was $1.49 a pound. Tofu was $4.49 for four boxes, which come out to be $1.12 per box. Condiments wise, the cheapest thing is sugar. It come out to be three cents per tablespoon and then it would be chicken bouillon, soy sauce, uh, it will be five cents each and also salt, garlic powder, oyster sauce is 13 cents, taco seasoning, mayo, 
Olive oil is 23 cents per tablespoon and the most expensive of all is actually black pepper is 32 cents per tablespoon. So going back to the question of did I succeed or not? Of course I did. And here is what I ate for the whole week. And you want to see all the detailed recipe, let me know and I can make it individually. So usually our breakfast is consists of a combination between egg, bacon, sausage, and coffee. And for me, because I'm on a constant fitness challenge, I will have like a veggie. So for example, I will boil like half a romaine heart or like broccoli on the side. But egg is very cheap. It's come up to be 14 cents per egg. So if you do two egg plus like a sausage and a cup of coffee, then it will be perfect for a dollar and 19 cents. Uh, also cake cup, we get it on sale usually like when it's like $6 off, I believe. Um, so if you get one of the K Cup Pete's coffee, it's 53 cents per pot. But if you get the reusable one and actually grind your own beans, it would be come up to be nine cents per cup. Milk-wise, my son drink organic milk, but for us, like my husband and I don't really care, so we just get the regular milk, which is also cheaper. Sausage-wise, my husband loved the hot links. It's come out to be a dollar and fifteen cents per link. But if you don't care about the sausages, um, there are other cheaper options. For example, this bacon sausage that my mother-in-law get come out to be seventy-seven cents per link. And if you go even cheaper and get the regular chicken frank sausage, it come out to be twenty-nine cents per link. So for lunch and dinner, um, rice is actually my main uh, grain of carbs um, base because it's the cheapest out of all compared to noodle and pasta. Rice is the cheapest and most filling. And plus, we're Asian family, so we eat a lot of Chinese food with rice. So one cup of uncooked rice actually make about three cup of cooked rice. So each meal we use about one cup of dry rice and it's enough for me and my husband. I also make my own bread, which come up to be about 20 cents per slice, because uh, 26 cents per slice. And I do thick cut, so if you really cut it even smaller, it can be 13 cents per slice. But if you get it from Costco, the Dave Killer bread is also 26 cents per slice. We cook with a lot of chili, but it's also very cheap to have. I actually got 30 pounds of the chicken breast and 20 pounds of the chicken thigh when it was on sale. So we just barely finished it and we just got the beef. Uh, spam, we got it when it was on sale. So it was $16.49 for 8 cans, so it come up to be about um, $20, uh, $2 per can. And one can actually lasts us for like three to four meal if I add egg and other ingredient in there, so stay tuned. Egg is also a very, very cheap protein option. Like I said earlier, it come up to be about 14 cents per egg. The number one questions I get from my friends, family, and my followers are, is it worth it? And I'm telling you, yes, I personally love to plan stuff. It's the nerdy side of me, but I enjoy the whole process of planning for a $50 challenge. But is it worth it as all comes to you? Like what's your budget? What's the time you have? Do you rather spend your time on like, you know, exploring and stuff like that? That's ultimately you. I like to get my meat in bulk, cut it in small pieces, and then vacuum seal it and keep it in the freezer. I cut it in very small pieces, so like one would be like one mile. You can use a freezer safe bag, Ziploc bag, or you can use a vacuum seal. Like to me, I personally like this meat better, like uh, the vacuum um, sealed one better. But one thing about like home food savers is like it doesn't vacuum seal like the commercial one. So it still leaked a little bit. But both of them is like pretty pink. I got it like a week ago and I freeze it a week ago and still it looked like basically pink. 
So people ask me, is it worth it to buy your meat in bulk and freeze it? Um, my answer to you is yes, because I save a lot of money that way. Like each pound of meat, if I get it in bulk, it's probably two to three dollars cheaper than get it at the regular supermarket. But if you're like my mom and my mother-in-law that absolutely cannot take frozen meat, then power to you, <laughs> get it fresh. So when it comes to freezing the meat, I always get a tray when I cut my pieces. Always have a towel to wipe down all the blood and of course um, your bags. So I highly recommend you to use a pleaser bag if you don't want to get a food saver because in the past I used these flimsy non-freezer bag and the meat just like got stick to the plastic and when you rip it off it just stuck on it and it's not good for you let's prep together it's super easy basically i just cut the meat in smaller pieces weight them and then put it in the vacuum seal bag the machine is very easy to use basically you seal the bottom to create a bag put the item in and then vacuum seal it here are some more samples of what we ate during the week to make planning easier, some of the items are repeated or I make a big batch of fried rice and eat it for two meals. It worked out for me, hopefully it'll work out for you too. I do learn that fried rice is one of the cheapest items to make, also noodle. They are really filling and you just need to add a little bit of meat and veggie in there to make it a balanced meal. All right, that's it for this video. Hopefully you like this content. If you want to see more video like this, make sure you leave a comment below to let me know and subscribe to our channel.